Okay, here's where we're starting to get to some of that meat and gravy about what makes up the periodic table. So this lesson is called, this part of the lesson is called take a number and the essential question is how can we describe atoms? How are they different? How come we just don't have one atom or one element? So number 12 asks you, how are two atoms of the same element alike? And explain your reasoning. So first you want to talk about why are atoms the same and called an element? Then you're going to want to talk about, well, if they were different, this is how they would be different. So really two parts to this question when it asks you to compare. And so here's some examples for you. Um, carbon exists naturally in different ways, in different forms. And so you have carbon in a diamond where it is in a very rigid lattice um, arrangement. That's what makes the, the diamond so hard. And then we have graphite. And what happens with graphite, the reason why we use it for pencils, one, it's inexpensive. And the carbons line up in these flat sheets. So you're actually rubbing off these sheets of carbon when you're using your pencil. And then this nanotube technology has done a lot to make things lighter and smaller. And so three different ways that carbon can exist and it's still carbon. So here are three images and all three of them are atoms of hydrogen. Now we have different names for deuterium and tri tritium, but it's all hydrogen. So this goes back to the question that they ask you to answer. How are hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium all the same? That's what it's asking. How are these atoms that are different still the same? And then the next part of the question would be for you to explain how they're different. I guess I have a blank slide. Okay, now we're looking at the symbols and these are the symbols that you're going to be able to find on the periodic table. And you're gonna to need to know what each of these numbers mean. So put a star by this, underline it, highlight it, whatever you need to do, need to do. Everything we do is a study guide for the test. But these are things that kids often have trouble with. First, we start out with the atomic number. That's gonna be equal mostly to the number of protons. In a stable neutral element, the number of protons is gonna equal the number of electrons. So in nitrogen, in the nucleus, there's seven protons. To balance that positiveness of those seven protons, the, the atom has seven electrons, which are negative. So the atomic number, how many protons there are. In the middle, you're always going to find the symbol name. Uh, the name isn't always going to be the first letter of the name of the atom. For example, AU is gold, AG is silver, PB is lead. And so sometimes it's not always going to make sense, I guess. And then you have the atomic mass. The atomic mass units are, if we were to take all the different forms of nitrogen that exist in nature and find the average mass, that is what that value is. And that's accepted by the scientific chemistry world. It's not just some random number. Like I went out and measured stuff and I said, oh, nitrogen, I'm getting 14.01. So therefore it is. It's been um, experimented with. It's been measured. It works all over the world. People have um, debated about it, talked about it, voted on it, all those other good sort of things. So here is nitrogen. 
And so we know that it has seven, seven protons. And so if it has seven protons, we know it has seven electrons. And where those electrons end up being are going to determine how the nitrogen is going to react. So if you remember, we talked about the first shell is going to be full, stable, happy with two electrons. So once the first shell has two electrons, the electrons are going to jump and be in the next orbital cloud level. And so the blue um, electron cloud has five electrons. Two, we have a total of seven. Seven minus two is five. For that shell to be happy, the nitrogen can do several things. It can lose those five electrons, which is probably going to be pretty hard because you have seven positive units pulling on each electron. Or it can share or steal three electrons from someone else to have that stable blue shell. Remember that the outermost shell or energy cloud, um, electron cloud, is called the valence level or the valence cloud. So nitrogen here has five valence electrons. Valence meaning the outside. So here we're looking at our nitrogen symbol on the periodic table again. Two um, electrons in the first shell, five electrons in the next shell, and it doesn't have that third shell. Okay, number 14 wants you to apply this knowledge. It wants you to use the model of the helium atom, so you're looking at this picture here, to find the atomic number and mass number. And so you will put those numbers here. Make sure to go back and read the definitions. If you didn't underline them or um, highlight them, you might want to do that or explain what they are out to the side so that you'll remember. And that takes us to the visual summary. So the visual summary has you start out with these four scenarios and marking whether or not they are true or false. And again, a good habit to get into is to underline if it is false, what word makes it false, and correcting it. It just helps you build that content knowledge and the information in your brain. And then here we are at a claims, evidence, and reasoning question. If you remember, I had gave you the handout. It was either hot pink or hot green, I think, and had you put it on the back of your binder. And this is the reason why. We're going to be answering these CER questions a lot. And they're popular and have become popular in science education in the last five to seven years, especially with the next generation science standards um, accepted by the, the nation. And so... The first thing you need to do is to state your claim. Then you will give evidence that supports your claim. And then you have to have a reasoning statement which ties together your evidence and your claim. So claim, evidence, and reasoning. So here's an example of what CER might look like. So take a minute, look at how they made their claim, what evidence they stated, and how they used parts of that evidence to support the claim they made at the beginning. Claim, evidence, and reason. You want to have at least two pieces of evidence to support your claim in a CER question.